Hello and welcome to part 3 of this series about Crusher X. This is the first part about the buffer. I'm going to give you a general explanation of how the buffer works and what different modes there are to use the buffer's content. In the next video, part 4 of this series, I'll talk about some details concerning the buffer by answering 10 questions about it. Let me call it mm, the Hornets under the Hood to refer to the channel trailer. If Crusher X were a manor house, the buffer would be the entrance hall. Every sound has to go through or be in the hall before being processed in Crusher X. You can invite your best friends as a group and let them directly into the hall of your house through a special door called load. But beware, if the load button is highlighted and you click it again, you delete the buffer's content. You can leave the main door to the hall wide open and let in a permanent stream of visitors. To do so, just switch auto on. As you see, the parts of your live play or your sequencer play coming in at first are permanently shifted ahead by those parts coming in later, until the older parts are completely shifted out of the buffer and by that out of processability. When you switch auto off, the door to the hall shuts and the content of the buffer doesn't change anymore as long as you don't open it again by clicking auto or by one of the methods described by the following animations or as long as you don't load a sound into the buffer, of course. You can open the door only from time to time if you want by having auto switched off and clicking manual. When you want some visitors to come in, the opening of the door is called trigger the buffer. When the buffer is triggered, the door opens and new sounds can get in, provided there is any waiting outside the door, meaning provided there is live playing going on or your sequencer is producing some sound. Or you can quantize the times when the door goes open by using your door as the concierge, letting sound in at every quantized point, for example, every beat, every step, every second beat, and so on. And, at last, you can set the trigger threshold so that you don't have to open the door manually, but everybody is let in automatically, provided he bangs at the door loud enough. Please notice, with auto being active, the trigger level is irrelevant. Of course it is, because clicking auto means opening the door to the hall and leaving it wide open. No special level of loudness is necessary to do so. Alright, what about my promise not to exceed 10 minutes when telling you the basics? I think I have kept that promise. The 10 questions I'm going to answer in the next video are... First, how large is the buffer? Second, how much of a stream of live played sound is let into the buffer when I click manual? Third, how much of a stream of live played sound is in the buffer at a given moment when auto is active? Fourth, how much of a stream of live played sound can be still heard streaming in before the sound gets stuck and static? Five. What happens when there is sound in the buffer, no live playing and no sequencer playing is going on and I nevertheless click the manual button?
six. Same question when there is live playing or sequencer playing going on. Seven. What happens when there is sound in the buffer and uh, one of the quantization modes, trigger or grain trigger, is activated, but my DOS sequencer is running but is not producing any sound? What is the range of adjustable trigger levels with auto switched off? Nine. How much of the sound in the buffer is really stored when using the save button of the vapor panel? And ten. How much of the sound in the buffer exceeding 60,000 milliseconds is shown in the grain view window? Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking and sharing, but mainly enjoy your life, perhaps by producing some interesting sound. Hopefully, see you later.